This is Christy Gatewood from Inez Consulting of Wilmer. I'll be your guide today as we explore the innovative new pit barn built at Wenlint Farms, just north of Painesville, Minnesota. Construction for this project began in April of 2022 and cattle were being moved into the barn by September of 2022. This barn features the Lely Vector Feed System, Dairy Power Smart Slurry Aeration System, AeroQuip Hydraulic Chutes, the Point System from Scale Tech, and this farm uses Performance Beef Tracking System to keep an inventory of all the cattle going through this site. We interviewed Jake Moline and Kirk Larson from Leadstone, Mike Hansen from Hansen Silo, and Mike Wenlint from Wenlint Farms to explore the innovative new technologies put into this barn. Mike Hansen, Hansen Silo. We worked with the Wentland family on the new cattle barn that we see here. It's uh, 106 wide by 204 long with the center drive over. And we did the, the slats, the beams, the center drive over, the rubber mats, and the bubbler. We'll move on to our uh, manure aeration system, commonly referred to as the bubbla. And uh, it's got four rotator valves that switch and it runs air down these two inch lines into the bottom of the pit. And then it bubbles up through these duck bills and a vacuum pump in this building that we'll see next. So the air bubbles, cause thorough mixing of the solids and giving the pit consistency and the aerobic bacteria digest toxins and ammonia, which in turn increases the nitrogen. On the rubber mats that are fastened down to our precast concrete slats, have you noticed uh, Pretty good performance there on the traction. Yeah, they're very sure-footed inside the barn. Um, on the slide itself, it does a very good job. The manure, the manure goes through it. Um, the ice does build up on some cold days, but it doesn't take much of a warm day at all when the ice is on that. So, I mean, a cattle appearance, cattle health, I think everything has been really good, good with the slats. And this is a, it's a DRI double button premium rubber product that we sell and uh, we've had we've had good luck with it at other customers too but you know it's not the lowest priced one out there but it's definitely uh, it's a quality woven there's actually cords in there similar to a tire so it's, the longevity is going to be better right that's what we were looking for was longevity and most of the cattle health, cattle, all that. So yep. That's what we were looking for. The comfort. Cattle comfort. Was good. And uh, obviously the weather today is a typical March day, but we're I'm not hearing a lot of coughing and the air quality is really nice. And right. That was one of our one of our biggest concerns with our vet with the active hit, with active bub bubbler, was that solid, that slow release of methane over time, you know, that, that hasn't been an issue at all. Because of, uh, instead of having a crust that can crack on its own and then you get a right. direct shot of gas. Yeah. You get a built up that wall at one time where we haven't even noticed anything to do with the air quality. No. Yeah, more of a fluid state. What did we tour? Five different sites? Yep, five different sites with different rubber, um, different ways of feeding, everything. And, uh, no two are really the same. So no. it's kind of up to the farmer to right. figure out what he, what your goals are, what your budget is, and then putting it together, making it all happen. Yeah, and that's, especially with this part with the Laley robot, the bubbler, the technology, it's kind of the first of its kind built and put together as one. So it was just a, a big thing to come together and Hans did a good job with you know, working with everyone else on the construction of the building. Not necessarily your 
lowest cost per head, obviously an outdoor lot is going to be that. But you have how many animals with one main person? Right? Yes, we increased, how many animals are you taking care of? We increased 700 heads on the farm with limited extra labor. Um, so that was probably the biggest thing on this entire barn was labor and animal health and all that. So one quarter, that's one of the biggest things that we might be working on. Animal health and comfort. So, yeah, for us to make this expansion, we would have had to buy a new TMR, a bigger, to have to put any more cattle on, on hand. Uh, we would have needed a new, a new tractor and everything. Uh, so by using technology at our, you know, at our power, we were able to accomplish all of that. And I, I, I don't feel like we have that much more investment on just a regular expansion. Um, and by utilizing this and saving them the labor and all that, um, help us focus on cattle, family, things of that nature. So as far as expansion goes, how many cattle did you have before and how many are you up to now? For this, we probably raised about 300 head. Um, we're, majority of it, we were crop farmers. Um, and we went into this and we now we are a cattle first farmer. Um, and now we're probably closer to the 1100 mark on various sites. So it was a, a, a pretty big expansion uh, where labor was one of the biggest you know, things to, one of the biggest hurdles to to, uh, to try to figure it out. Yeah, that, that's a good point too, because if this was bed pack, you'd be doing manure oh. every lease or at oh, least I, bedding. We'd be bedding every day. Um, with this amount of animals, we wouldn't have enough corn ground too. We have to we have to buy corn straw or some alternative bedding just to handle this kind of animal. So that was huge by itself with the no bedding, the no cleaning, moving cattle around. I mean, bed packs have their purpose, but this is one of the things that we find out to do better. So we one of the things that we've heard from other customers is with uh, you know increased pricing on all the stuff. The cost of doing the bed pack, it used to be a huge save. Right. You know, the slats were expensive and uh, right now it's uh, negligible. Well, I mean, we think about that bale of straw, it takes time in the field, bale it, chop it, bring it home, store it, and then we have to deliver it to the cattle. Then we have to actually take it back out as well. So there's a lot of labor that goes into a bed pack. Still and diesel food. And diesel fuel, yes. I mean, it's labor by that itself, you know. And Versus having, uh, having the option of having no bedding, still having performance with good, clean cattle. Um, I feel like for us, it was a good call to go that way. On the slats. On the slats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. And uh, I was intending, or just meaning on the initial construction, but you brought up some great points on the operation of it, too. Yeah. As far as feeding goes, how much time do you spend in the actual feed mixing versus what you think you would do without the Lely system? Uh, with this barn, with the Lely system, uh, with the various rations in the barn, as we sit here, we got five different rations running right now. I would think it would take four hours, uh, man hour, just four hours to mixing and delivering. Uh, without even the accuracy of having the different rations. Um, so right now what we're probably spending 45 to an hour and a half um, every day filling the kitchen, bringing the, bringing the materials up for the, the Lely machine. Um, and the rest of it pretty much is the rest of that time is spent with, you know, animal husbandry and animal health. So spending the time with the cattle instead of just trying to feed the cattle. That's a good point. And I think the max that I've heard is about, you know, there's technology available to have up to like three days of storage in the live bottom bins that would supply a robot too. Right. Yeah. I mean, we've had a couple of snowstorms this winter where we did pack it in and we had uh, 48 hours to so three days of feed in this building where we didn't have to run the skid loader outside. Or, you know, and that just allows us to do other things with the snowstorm actually makes you want to have to do something else.